the power of realism, where tension ends and excitement begins, enriching lives through selfless service. As we are moving on to a new chapter, and today we are talking about Eating Disorder Awareness Week. And they say anything that gives us pleasure, we repeat it. This is human nature, this is animal nature, and this is all nature. Nearly 2,500 years ago, Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, has supposedly said that all diseases begins in the gut, and stomach health is something worth prioritizing. So what are eating disorders? Eating disorders are a range of psychological conditions that cause unhealthy eating habits. Approximately 1.25 million people in the UK have an eating disorder. Eating disorders are serious mental illnesses that involve disordered eating behavior. This might mean limiting the amount of food eaten, eating very large quantities of food at once, getting rid of food eaten through unhealthy means like purging, laxative misuse, fasting or excessive exercise. So what causes eating disorders? Experts say genetics and personality traits like moodiness, perfectionism, pressures to stay thin. And here are some of the most common eating disorders. Anorexia, people viewing themselves as overweight, bulimia, eating with a feeling of lack of control and purging it out. Binge eating disorder, eating large amounts of food rapidly in secret. Pika, craving for non-food stuff such as ice, dirt, soil, chalk, soap, paper, hair, cloth, wool, pebbles, laundry detergents, etc. Rumination disorder, here the food previously eaten is pursed out and rechewed or swallowed. Avoidant or restrictive food intake disorder. This is disturbed eating habit, which is due to a distaste for certain smells, tastes, colors, textures or temperatures. So how should we observe the eating disorder week? Firstly, we should help those in need and support them and their families. Secondly, if you have recovered from an eating disorder or know someone who has, share their story to inspire others. Lastly, educate yourself and others about eating disorder and the dangers they pose. So let's spread awareness and promote healthy living. And in the words of Socrates, you should eat to live and not live to eat. Tell us, what does eating disorder mean to you? Eating disorder are based uh, simply on psychology, on some form of trauma, however major or minor. It develops higher in girls, that's to do with societal pressure on young women being told they have to be slim, they have to concur with a certain type of beauty. Um, pressure at school, starts very young, pressure at school, stereotyping of young women. Also, it occurs in boys too. It's higher the rate these days than it used to be. Often boys hide away from the fact they've got it because they don't think it's manly or boy stuff, which is very sad because all these people, they basically need to find out the core of their emotional problems. And if that can be worked out or worked through, hopefully by time, sometimes it takes many years, once they feel content, once they feel secure with themselves, able to make independent decisions without having maybe negative parents or ne negativity in their life, I, through bullying or whatever the situation, they can hopefully start to get better again. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you, God bless you all. Amen. Tell us, what does eating disorder mean to you? Eating disorder is to me when food starts to dominate your, your life and it can dominate in two in more than two ways um, not enough of it 
um, so that you're, everything is about controlling what comes in. Um, too much of it, um, so that you can't stop, or that you, 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 you binge eat or eat in secret, um, or eating the wrong kinds of stuff. Um, the point is that in all things, uh, uh, the food is starting to run your life. It's not there to help you, it's become the thing that's controlling you. So what can one do about it? Well, um, uh, a, dietist, a dietitian um, is really, really helpful. Um, there is, what usually happens is that it's, if, if there's a serious um, food problem, it's more to do with troubles from your past and you're trying to use food to control those, um, to medicate yourself, to make yourself feel a bit better. Um, to try and um, kind of soothe something um, or to get control where in the past you don't feel that you have enough control um, and so you're using food as a way to control either yourself or to control the other people who are trying to give you food um, there's, you, uh, food can be a means of manipulation because other people are so anxious that you're not eating properly and then they're kind of dancing around you but the point is um, for healthy eating um, food has to become again a source of joy um, and a source of release and a source of sharing and when it goes wrong it becomes a means for control um, and power and it ends up just making everybody unhappy so please talk to a dietitian or you may need to talk to a therapist so what message would you give to the world peter i think the world has a food problem about a fifth of us haven't got enough to eat about a fifth of us nationally speaking eat too much and about a th uh, the middle third uh, middle three thirds if you like um, uh, three fifths uh, they have about right but our, we are damaging the earth by the way we grow food um, we're uh, ploughing up jungles and polluting rivers and I, I would say the world has a food problem in the way it, it grows food and we all need to change Peter as always a pleasure thank you very much no problem Bye. Tell us, what does eating disorder mean to you? Oh, very simply, it means when a person's relationship with food has, has broken to the extent that they're using food or perceiving food in a way that is unhealthy and unnatural. So what can one do about it? Well, I actually used to have an eating disorder and I went for counselling for it. Um, because I used to get very nervous eating in public and once I had complete understanding about what was going on and in prayer uh, I, I got free of my eating disorder so I think what can people do about it they can seek help because and don't suffer in silence because help is available What message would you give to the world Ben? I would say there are people who understand your situation, who care about you, um, and I encourage you to reach out to those people and get free to live life to the full, as Jesus said he wants to enable us to do. Ben, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks, Sanjay. What does eating disorder mean to you? Eating disorder, what it means to me, it's uh, how people are going for this, in pursuit of this perfect body. In some cases, it's not the perfect body, but it's what leads to other stuff. So when they go for this, it's the media. For me, it's the media, how they portray a perfect body. When they take pictures of someone with a lot of imperfections, and then they airbrush it, superficially make it so that it becomes a perfect body it portrays an image that is not real but to the people out there where who are in chase of this perfect body who looks at this image and think wow this this is a perfect this is what i want this is what i want this is how it has to be 
Now, in that chase, they know that this image is airbrushed. But even then, it just doesn't, for them, it's a dream, they have to chase it. Right, for those who, with money, they will go and get surgeries done. Not that it's going to give them the perfect body. But in their minds, it's giving them a perfect body because they may get a few comments saying, this is perfect. You look absolutely beautiful. Even though some people know that they look absolutely hideous, they will, as a, as a sort of common in kind, and say, yeah, you, you look beautiful. So that leads to further surgeries and further things. In terms of people who start going on drastic diets, who, don't, who may not necessarily have the money, they go on drastic diet. There's people with certain money, they'll uh, go on drastic exercise regimes, which is not a bad thing. But on top of that, go on drastic diets. This can lead to disorders. This can lead to illnesses. People not eating well, sleeping well. They all of a sudden now this, this image that they want to create for themselves, it goes, um, it goes a bit drastic. It, it becomes like almost obsessive. They become possessed. Now, the, that's where the danger is grand. Now, when they can't achieve this, this could lead to depression. Then they start looking in the mirror and think, I don't like what I see. This is not what I wanted. This could either go two ways. They could go into binge eating, start eating more. This could give them a complete opposite of what they wanted. Or it could go the other way where they start eating less. I don't like this, I don't like this. And it goes to a stage where they're completely shrunk. And they've become now like a, a bag of bones like a skeleton so what message would you give to the world my message to the world is be content with who you are yes better yourself live a healthy lifestyle yes but don't become obsessed and pos i mean it's not a be all and end all having the perfect body or ha having a perfect image go out there and just be content be content with yourself be at peace with yourself Know your limits, what you can do, what you can't do. And at the same time, stay healthy. Stay healthy. That's the biggest thing. Your mind, if your mind is healthy, your body will be healthy. Best thing is to keep your mind healthy. Yash, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. No problem. Tell us, what does eating disorder mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I've never suffered from an eating disorder myself, but um, I, the first time I think I, I heard about an eating disorder was Princess Diana, um, when it came out that she suffered from bulimia. Um, and then I, I think I, I think I must have read it in a newspaper that it's uh, it's one of these eating disorders where you eat, you eat food and then you basically make yourself throw up. And I thought that sounded quite, you know, quite nasty, to be honest. Uh, so that's the first time. And then... Uh, anorexia as well, um, you know, where you just starve yourself basically. Um, and, um, and so a lot of these conditions, I think they're to do with sort of body dysmorphia. So you you look at yourself in the mirror and you don't really see what other people see. You see a distorted, you see a distorted image of yourself. I don't know if that's to do with uh, psychological problems or, um, or or things like that, but you know, the, these things are, are recognizable now and they're and they're treatable so you know it's good that people more people are aware of these things so what can one do about it i think if if you suspect somebody has an eating disorder because i thought the problem when people have an eating, eating disorder you know in, in my opinion or any, any anything that's kind of not good for you is you don't recognize it yourself and you're in denial so if you, if you suspect somebody is suffering from an eating disorder I think the best thing to do is to point it out to them to, uh, for a start. You know, say you know, I think that you've got a, a problem here, and then and then maybe they they you know you get them to recognise that they have a problem and they'll and, and they'll seek help or or just be that um, you know that comforting ear to listen to if if they need that. I what message would you give to the world, Tom? Yeah, I think like I say, just just be aware that uh, you know people have have uh, image problems. Um, and, uh, and just be there for them and, and recognize that the, the, these issues are there. Tom, as always, a pleasure. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Sandra.